Welcome to the second video in the DJ101 video reboot series. In the last video, we covered how to properly warp your tracks, as well as how to use warp markers to give you visual cues of the different sections of music. In this video, we'll cover how to use multiple clips to create cue points, as well as how to label and organize your tracks in your live library. Now that we have our track fully warped, let's check the volume level. I'm going to jump to the loudest section of the track and see where it's reading on the mixer. As you can see, it's hitting around plus 2.5 dB. So I'm going to go adjust the clip volume down to minus 3 dB so that the track tops out at around 0 dB on Live's mixer. If you set the volume level of all of your tracks in this way, it will give you a good starting point for mixing from track to track. Next, we need to label the track. You can see now that it's labeled Track Name, Artist Name. This is good for making the track list for your mix, but for the purposes of performing, let's add some more information. When DJing, it's easy to change up the genre, but it's not usually recommended that you drastically change the tempo unless you do it just right. So, the first order of track organization for me is tempo. You can see that this track is at 127, so I'm going to add that tempo to the beginning of the name of the clip. Next, I want to add the key information so that I can mix harmonically from track to track. If harmonic mixing is a new term for you, you should check out harmonicmixing.com. I won't go into detail about this now, but that is where I got the Camelot key system that I use for labeling my tracks. I know that this track is in C minor, so I'm going to add 5A and C minor to the title of the clip. Now the clip should be titled as follows. Tempo, Camelot key, musical key, track name, artist name. I use the Camelot key info to know which tracks will sound good together, and I use the musical key info to know which scale to play in case I want to jam some synth over a track. So now tracks in my library will be grouped by tempo, then by key within that tempo, with the most harmonious tracks being located near each other, and then finally the artist and track names. Note that if you were to only use the musical key label, then the computer would organize them alphabetically, which is not a musically harmonious order. Next, we need to create cue points and mix loops using multiple clips. The first clip that I like to have is a good loop to mix in and out of. This can be a drum intro or outro, but it should not contain any pitched information. So let's go back to our track and start at the beginning. So it looks like the first 8 bars of the drum intro are the same, so we'll make that one clip. Title that Drums. And let's double check just to be sure. Let's duplicate this clip and see what happens in the next section. If you select the top of the loop bracket and press your up arrow key, then the loop bracket will jump forward by the current length of the loop. Okay, still the drum intro, although a little bit more going on. So let's call this Drums Plus. And let's hear what happens at bar 17. Alright, so let's duplicate that again and have a third clip. And we'll call this Drums Plus Plus. Make sure it starts at bar 17. And it looks like this one can be a 16 bar loop. You can see that with this track's intro, I was able to create three different loops that each build in intensity, but they also don't lead in any direction, so it's okay for them to repeat. 
Setting the beginning of your tracks up in this way helps you not have to be as familiar with the arrangement of the track. For instance, if I was mixing out of a track into this track, and I just started this track from the beginning, then I would only have 32 bars to complete my mix over, and I would be on a sort of countdown to finish before the bass or the melodic section dropped in. Now, 32 bars is plenty of time to mix over, but let's say that you weren't as familiar with your tracks, and maybe one of the tracks didn't have 32 bars and only had 16, or some other track had more. You know, since that length of time can vary, I prefer to set it up in a way to where I can have control over what's going on during the intro, and then when I'm ready to jump into the track, I can have control over when that happens. Since these three drum clips are kind of flexible and can be played over anything, I'm going to change their color to white. The next clip will be the real start of the song. So I'm going to keep this clip titled with the track name info. It is going to start where my intro clips left off at bar 33, and is going to play through the full length of the track with the loop at the end. Next, I want to create some clips that serve as cue points or jump to points, in case I want to get through the track faster. I usually make the first of these jump to the break. And again, this clip will start at the break and go through the end of the track. Now, I know that this track has two breaks, so I'll make the next clip jump to break two. And finally, I'll add a jump to outro clip. Of course, there are many other options for different types of clips you can make. Sometimes I like to make a main loop clip, and this will be a clip that maybe starts at the main drop and goes for 16 to 32 bars. So for this track, that would look like this. Perhaps another clip would be some sort of interesting material that you would want to make a small loop and to use as a break maker clip. So you could sit on this loop and then augment it with effects creating your own build, and then whenever you're done, jump back into that main clip for the drop. So now that I have all the clips and all of the necessary information, I'm ready to put it into my library. So open the browser and locate folder 1, and if it's not already directed to the library, you can click on the white title bar, and then under the drop-down menu, you can select library. If you don't already have one, you'll want to create a new folder titled Tracks or DJ Bin. If you notice, I put a Z at the beginning of my folder name, and this is just a little trick to force my folders to the bottom of the list so that they're easy to find. You could also use a zero if you wanted to put it at the top of the list. Inside of that folder, I have different folders for each genre. This way I can read the room and pick from what type of track I'd want to play. You could also have a favorites folder, or maybe folders that organize by the time of night, so midnight, 1am, or you can even have a folder of all your original tracks. I'd consider this track Tech House, so I'm going to put it in that folder. As you can see, all the tracks that are already in there are conveniently organized by tempo and then key. So before we drop the clips in, we need to select the clip that has the full label and copy that name to our clipboard. Then select all of the clips and drag them into the folder. When you do this, Live will create a new ALS file and it will remember all of the warp and clip information. You can go ahead and rename this file with the full label and you can see that Live will file it accordingly. The good thing about organizing your DJ crate in this way is that it lends itself to a more organic flow of song selection, as opposed to having a prearranged set. Before I organized my DJ crate in my live library, I used to keep all of the tracks that I wanted to play inside of the set that I was DJing with, and so I would just have some extra tracks that had anywhere from 30 to 60 tracks in there. 
And the problem with this is that Live has to load all of those tracks into the set. And unless they're in your Live library, they could be scattered all about the hard drive, and so you may run into disk read errors and have audio dropouts. With an organized library of tunes, you'll be ready to pick up any last minute gigs that pop up without having to do a bunch of pre-production. I know that if you haven't been organizing your tracks in this way, it will be a long process to transition to this type of library, but I think that it's well worth it. So I'd recommend starting with your favorite tracks and then just making sure to organize any new tracks that you get in this way. Pretty soon, you'll find that you'll be ready to play more shows instead of spending all your time preparing for shows. Thank you for choosing Ableton Up. We'll see you next time.